there's a way to make an entrance. <laughs> My destiny. It was now a conspiracy of witches. Download Veely today. With a 1 in 13 chance of dying in childbirth, women in sub-Saharan Africa must feel they're in a combat zone. So when they're really caught up in civil conflict, it's like being on the front line twice over. We asked Dr. Grace Cadindo, one of Africa's top doctors, to find out what it's like on the front line in the Democratic Republic of Congo. My name is Grace Kodindo. I'm a doctor and an obstetrician. I'm traveling to Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo, where for many years a series of military conflicts have been raging. For years, Dr. Um, Grace Kodindo fought to save lives in <laughs> ill-equipped maternity wards in her native chair. She's three kilo, 100. No dehydrated, she's asking for water to drink. TV documentaries and the press recorded her team's struggle. We had one death on uh, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday this morning. Well, this morning we had two. Her achievements have been honored with international awards. She's been invited to address the UN. Do women from poor country really have the same right to life and health as their sisters in rich countries? Grace now works with the Columbia University program, helping to improve reproductive health care for people affected by war. This mission to Congo to find out more about women's special needs in conflict zones. I've come to see for myself the impact of the fighting on its main victims, the women and children. Grace is traveling to North Kivu, a war-torn region in the Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo. It's still highly insecure. The humanitarian agencies providing her transport refuse UN armed escort. They believe it's safer to avoid direct association with the conflict. But they must constantly report their position. Grace aims to meet as many people affected by war as possible, but she's in for a shock. She's seen what neglect can do to women, ah, okay. but not yet active conflict. 19-year-old Yvonne Salama was attacked by okay. soldiers as she made her way okay. to her parents' okay. field. Yvonne, tell me what happened. They dragged me to the forest and raped me. I hid myself away because I didn't want anyone to know. Only when I found I was pregnant did my parents send me to the clinic. Some believe rape survivors are cursed and will die in childbirth. Many women here die. When you are pregnant, you have to pray to God. It's only by God's grace that you survive pregnancy. Her parents did not know how critical time is in the hours and days following rape. She's a very strong person. She's even worried about how to find clothes for her future baby. Still, uh, I was not uh, emotionally prepared to, uh, to talk to her. Why that? Well, because to see such a young girl going through such a traumatic uh, event and still being strong enough to talk, uh, about what uh, she's going through. She's very calm. She's, uh, she, she's showing that uh, even if she has, uh, she's afraid, but she's still trying to keep herself uh, together and uh, trying to go through this uh, pregnancy. The 
Anguba Health Zone, epicenter of the fighting. Many who fled have started to return. Things not yet back to normal, but the damaged hospitals and clinics are starting to function. Dr. Serge Ilunga is a brave man. He stayed at his post amid the worst of the war. The main health impact of the war is rape and sexual violence. What are the health issues apart from sexual violence? Many fled into the bush, so they didn't give birth in the hospital. Many mothers died along with their babies. In conflict zones, women in labor are unlikely to make it to a qualified doctor, such less to a hospital. So they have to rely on one of those. This emergency birth kit consists of a sterile plastic sheet, soap, gloves, a razor blade and medical tape. For a woman giving birth while on the run, it can make the difference between life and death for her and her baby. The hospitals also stopped with another lifesaver, pet kits, which include emergency drugs to protect rape victims from pregnancy and sexually transmitted infections, including HIV. Can you prevent mother-to-child infection of HIV? Yes, we can. That's good. But Grace's years as an obstetrician in some of Africa's poorest hospitals have sharpened her eye for detail. This is an area with some of the highest maternal mortality rates in the world. Yet the hospital register seems unusually free of maternal deaths. Do you never have maternal deaths? No. No? You've never had a maternal no. death? No. The hospital register records okay. about a thousand births a year. Grace feels the complete absence of maternal deaths is implausible. So this is your register of births? Yes, this is our register. How do you explain this? There's not one single maternal death. Do they die on the road or in their houses? We don't have any figures. Do you mean there's no cases of maternal deaths in the whole area? Well, it could happen, but it's rare. Nor are there any recorded cases of HIV-positive patients. We get many STD infections, but hardly any HIV. Only when Grace pursues the issue does the reason for the seemingly low prevalence of HIV infection become clear. Actually, running HIV checks here is difficult because we don't have the proper reagents for testing. Despite the shortcomings, by local standards, this hospital is well equipped. Grace sets off to look at conditions further off the beaten track. All along the way, signs of the fighting that's taken the lives of five and a half million people in the last decade. The Congolese army has fought its way against half a dozen of the weapon militias. Only recently has the UN brokered a fragile peace with 17,000 new helmets now on the ground. Things are far from settled. An aid worker has just been killed. You can still hear sporadic shooting at any time of the day or night. Grace is keen to meet people who've returned since the fight has subsided. Their stories are a poignant reminder of why reproductive health care is such a critical need in conflict zones. She meets two couples. Both women gave birth while fleeing the conflict. I had been given an emergency basket, which I put in my bag, but we were robbed as we ran. Esther gave birth while on the run, without the emergency delivery kit. Her baby died soon after. 
qu'il est décédé. Décédé où Claudine Moyomi was luckier. Her husband was able to hang on to their clean delivery kit as they fled. He delivered the baby himself, and the child survived. There was shooting everywhere as we fled. My wife started having a little pain, so we went into some bushes. I put on the rubber gloves, and I cut the cord with the razor. It was cold and we had no baby clothes. It's very rare that a husband deliver his wife, especially in Africa. This is, this is my first time to hear about that. They had the um, clean delivery kit. And clean delivery kit is something very basic. There is only one plastic sheet, one uh, razor, string, small uh, soap, and that's all. But that can make difference between life or uh, death because it helps to prevent tetanus, which is one of the most uh, common cause of neonatal death and or, or even maternal death from tetanus. This is a family of uh, 10 chil uh, 12 children. They have fled during the crisis, they come back. Now, both the husband and the wife want to limit their children now, but they don't know where and how. So this is a typical case of unmet need for family planning. The Ritzoro Town Health Centre was Bonjour. ransacked during the fighting and still only barely manages to function. This is the consultation and observation room. Mm -hmm. Men and women are mixed in here. Mm -hmm. It's all special. Okay. D'accord. What happens in case of bush complications such as a hemorrhage or convulsions? What do you do then? We immediately refer them. So how do you get them to hospital? We fill in the form. We are made apart the papiers. But apart from the forms, how do you get them to the hospital? By ambulance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And how long does it take? About an hour or so. So within an hour, the patient is on her way to hospital? Thank you. Who helps with the home birth? No one. So it must be the traditional midwives who help with the home birth? Yes. What if a rape victim comes in? Yes, we have got rape kits. Can I see? I see you have antiretrovirals. Yes. And do you have the morning after pill? Yes. Mass rape has become a weapon of war in the Congo. Martin Mwazo's world was turned upside down as she fled the conflict. Her husband and their four children were with her. Some soldiers grabbed hold of me and raped me. I needed medical treatment. Then my husband said he didn't want me anymore. When I got home, my house was burned down. As a result of the rape, Marta was left pregnant, infected with gonorrhea, and alone with four children, with no roof over their heads. Some villagers lent her the use of an old house. This is uh, where she's uh, living now. You can see that the roof is almost uh, out. So during the rain, water is just flowing over her and her children. The story of this poor woman with her four children and the fifth on the way can just, you know, uh, conclude the whole tragedy that people in this area of conflict are going through. Now she finds herself with sexually transmitted infection and a pregnancy with no means to live on. It's really unjust for one person to go through this whole uh, tragedy. It's really unjust. Faced with the sheer scale of sexual violence against women, the clinics here offer therapy programs to help repair broken lives. These women are learning to sew, which can also help earn a living. 
C'est très bien. Well done. Tout à fait, Good work. Vous faites un bon travail là. C'est très très bien. C'est très bien. Ce qui est là, le service. To the west is Birambizo, an area that's even less secure. Thousands of displaced people are in camps, huddled for safety around the UN bases. But even here, armed groups make a point of harassing them. <coughs> All these displaced people are congregating very near the uh, UN forces for their safety. Last night at around one in the morning, some rebels have shot to intimidate the people and to show them that UN people cannot always protect them. And this shows how sensitive is the situation. Oh, what's up? The population of three displaced people's camps, as well as the local village of Katsuru, are served by a makeshift health center. Merci. How many people are served by this clinic? With the camps, there are 17,000. With so many displaced people, the clinic is struggling to cope. Women in labor have to share a room with people with all kinds of diseases. In the delivery room, Leonia is about to give birth. She's praying there'll be no complications. What happens if she has complications? Say she has hemorrhages or eclampsia. The villagers make a structure and carry her to another clinic. How far is that? It's how many kilometers? Twenty kilometers. Twenty kilometers. This is the pharmacy. This tiny cupboard contains the clinic's entire stock of medicines. It serves the medical needs of 17,000 people. How many cases of rape do you get here in a month? 20 rapes a month. Do you have pet kits and the morning after pills? We don't have any. Can you give antibiotics? No. There are none? We only have tiny amounts. So you're not medically equipped for this situation? No, we are not equipped to deal with it. For the sexual violence situation? That's right. So you can't run HIV checks to prevent mother-to-child transmission? No, we just don't have the means. You don't have the means. As you can see, we don't have the means. You don't even have sterile gloves, nothing? Not even delivery kits. You don't have delivery kits. Are there any female midwives working here? There was one, but she left. She told us she would prefer to work somewhere else. Because of the lack of equipment, she left. In the camp, for example, the woman is in what do you do if a woman gives birth, birth, but the placenta doesn't come out properly? I try to get it out with my fingers. If that doesn't work, we'll refer her. Can I see your stock of condoms? Your reserve of condoms that you have. This is our stock of condoms. Okay. Voilà. Okay. So these are all the condoms in the clinic? Just three? You have three condoms. And what about all the contraceptives? Can I see what you've got? The pillules? You have ovrets. Ovrets are a contraceptive okay. pill prescribed for mothers who are breastfeeding. This is the only type you have? Yes. yes. That's not enough. We only have a few. You only have a few. Mm. Okay. 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 Outside, a group of women have been patiently waiting to talk to Grace. They're all survivors of rape. Are they happy to talk to us? They don't feel embarrassed? No, they're not embarrassed. The women are keen to tell their stories. The soldiers tagged me screaming into the forest. I was screaming like crazy. People thought I was being murdered. They were too scared to come and help. Were you tested for HIV? Yes, they tested me for HIV, but I still have the lower back pain. I'm an old lady, you know. 
toutes les femmes là, ce sont des femmes qui sont des victimes de viol. Oui. Donc euh, tous ces enfants so qu'ils ont là, c'est les enfants, c'est les produits de, yes. de la violence sexuelle. Right. Tu veux me présenter la femme là 25-year-old Oliva Zamkunda was left pregnant after a group of soldiers raped her. When my husband found out, he threw me out of the house. I ran away. Je voudrais te demander How did you give birth? They couldn't help me at the clinic, so they sent me to the hospital in Nyanzali, where I had a cesarean. You're very lucky. If you hadn't had that cesarean, you and your children could have died. You and your children could have died. You and your children could have died. 20% of the population living in the camp. But the, 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 big, the large majority are living outside the camp. They have no access at all to services that can help save their lives. So this woman is really one of the luckiest. How many of you were abandoned, abandoned by your husband as a result of being raped? <laughs> Out of the 60 victims of rape that are here today, 58 of them have been abandoned by their husband. Only two are still with their husband. Fear of attack while asleep in their beds is forcing many people to hide in the bush at night, only returning to their villages in the morning. All across Birambizo, Grace finds women who want to space their pregnancies and doctors and nurses willing but unable to help. If only I knew how to delay my pregnancies, I would do so. Can you help her? In theory, I can help her, but in practice... I mean, can you give her contraceptives now? What? Now? Yes. No, I haven't got any. There are no contraceptives in the whole Biambizo health zone. None. It's a real need for the whole population around here. Absolutely. Grace wants to hear a male perspective. Haragiro Bitabi lost his five children in the war. He and his wife now live in a displaced people's camp. He's a suspected case of TB. We sleep in fear. The women fear being raped and mutilated. Why do men abandon their wives when they've been raped? Why do men abandon their wives when they've been raped? They are scared of getting infected. Some people believe that rape is a woman's fault. What do you think? No, it's not her fault. But I also be scared of getting infected, so I'd make sure she was treated at the clinic before taking her back home. But I wouldn't abandon her. Have you heard about male rape? We find it very disturbing and we are scared. I'm also scared for myself. I'm scared to go to my fields on my own. Many people don't like talking about male rape, so cases may be higher than most assume. Among men, it's at least 20% of men and for women. So 20% of rapes are men and 80% of women? Yes. So it could be higher than 20%? Yes. But what we see here is around 20% of rapes on men. So it could be more because most men just wouldn't come because of shame? Because of the shame, yes. Back in Katsuru, Leonia has given birth. Any complications would have meant a four-hour trek on a stretcher to a clinic. Decent supply of cheap drugs and medical equipment would make such journeys unnecessary. Where do even begin ending the suffering? An end to impunity. Justice seems as good a place as any. Thank you.
By chance, Grace comes across a roadside court martial. A group of soldiers and their officers stand accused of raping and terrorizing civilians. The symbolism does not escape some local women. They've been waiting all day to witness the scene. Women in the world's conflict zones need medical help. And they also need justice. You are each sentenced to rely a time hard labor. <laughs> Although only a beginning, this is a real sign of hope. By far the biggest casualties of this conflict are civilians, not the fighters. And the women and children suffer the most. Their need is the greatest. Reproductive health care must be seen as a frontline priority, not something to think about only after the fighting is over.